I'm Luke here with Amy. Amy and I are Master of Finance student at the University of Otago here with Sam Stubbs, the Founder and Managing Director of Simplicity. How are you today? Good, Sam? thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me along. No worries. And the first question is, what did you study at university and how did your degree prepare you for the real world? Well, um, I had, had nothing to do with numbers, so I studied philosophy at university and politics. And um, how did it prepare me? Hmm, I think the parties probably prepared me quite a lot for the real world as well. But um, one of the interesting things about the liberal arts, I guess, is it taught me critical thinking. So not, you know, to understand an idea, but not to accept it without challenging it. So I guess that was what I learned. I don't remember anything I learned, uh, but I came out of it with an ability to think, I hope. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So you are the founder and managing director of Simplicity, a non-profit fund manager. What makes Simplicity different from other KiwiSaver fund managers? Just well, have you got a couple of hours? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> let me cut it down to not. a few really simple points. We're a non-profit, which means we charge much lower fees. Mm -hmm. We're owned by charity, which means we give 15% of those fees to charity. It's about $100,000 a month now. Um, and uh, we invest uh, passively, so we um, don't make active decisions about what we invest in although we do invest uh, ethically and with a purpose as well. So yeah, that's, I, I guess that's what makes us different, yeah. You've worked for Goldman Sachs, Nate West Markets, Faye, Rich White and IBM New Zealand. Which role was the most challenging and why? Um, look, I think Goldman Sachs was the most challenging because um, it is a very, um, well, it's a high powered organisation, right? It's a serious investment bank and um, they, uh, you know, they really didn't understand the work-life balance. It was the work-work balance. Mm -hmm. So um, I spent an awful lot of my time in planes uh, all over the world and working very hard. So it was challenging in that sense. But it was also the most amazing experience because it was just working with incredibly high quality people, high caliber people. And that's, that's just a joy, you know. Um, and I got to meet a lot of amazingly interesting companies as well. Um, and I was working at an, in a period of time when China was just opening up, so we were doing a lot of business in China as well, which was really fascinating early on. Yeah. So what are your three most important life lessons? Um, I have a lot of life lessons, but I guess if I was to narrow it down to three, I would say, because if I was to say to someone like you, you know, what advice could I give you in life, I guess? The first one would be, it doesn't matter what you're good at, just be good at something. So, um, because, the, because it's, you know, it, it, the world is very competitive. So the trick is finding what you love and then doing it really well. And don't worry what anyone tells you about whether that's good or right or appropriate or not. Just be good at something. I think that would be the first thing. I think the other thing is that, you know, success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Nothing substitutes for hard work. So all of these people who are gifted, rich parents, advantages in life, they will not make it unless they work hard. So I think that would be the, the second thing. But the third and perhaps the most important um, uh, uh, life lesson is, is always have some purpose in your life. Uh, and that purpose usually involves giving back or giving something to somebody, but a life with purpose is a much happier life. Um, all other things um, aside than, than one without. But you have to find your own purpose as well. So have a purposeful life, do something really well and just work hard and it'll all work out. <laughs> what attributes do you look for in graduate recruits? Um, I think the thing we most look for is, um, let's call it ad attitude and curiousness. So we hire a huge number from all over the world. We have employees from um, Sudan, um, the Republic of the Congo, I mean just everywhere in the world. Um, they all have, I think, two things in common. One is they're curious, right? So they just want to know things and they want to find things out. So they will naturally uh, know how to ask the right question, right? Um, and, and they won't accept an answer as being correct unless they really feel it's correct, you know? They'll challenge. I think that's the first thing. Um, I think, uh, sorry, no, so I'd say the second, actually, I'm going to use a terrible word here, is this, we don't hire wankers. <laughs> So I actually think, you know, you've got to be a nice person and a collegiate person because the power of a team is so much more than the power of the individual. 
So you've got to be able to get on and be in a team and you've got to be curious. From that, pretty much everything else follows. We have an interesting hiring purpose. We get everybody to hire everybody. So everyone has to be interviewed twice by every other employee. So it's incredibly difficult to join us because it's very time consuming. But by then, when they start on day one, they walk on and they feel like they're part of the family because everyone's, everyone's agreed that they should be hired and they feel like they know everybody and then everybody knows them. Makes it, so it's a very, very long process to get in but it's highly successful. Hardly anybody ever leaves. Yeah. Awesome. How do you measure achievement and why? Uh, is that personal achievement or the achievement of others? Why don't we do both? Okay, well my personal achievement is, um, you know, the single most important thing I am as a father. So um, uh, everything else piles into insignificance in terms of how I do as a dad. Um, I think, uh, uh, and, and then in terms of achievement, it's that purpose thing. So I get up in the morning and I think, look, was this a day usefully spent in the service of others? Pretty much is how I operate. And from that I get really uh, soulful nourishment. Um, uh, in terms of um, achievement in others, is you know how I said before, just be good at something? I just really admire people who work hard to be good at something. I don't care what it is. And I've found myself falling in love with people who do the stuff that I would never have considered to have been, um, uh, you know, worthy before I, you know, I, I, I started appreciating that just doing something well is, is really cool. Um, my, uh, my, my stepson does graffiti art. I would have considered him an urban terrorist at graffiti art, and now I just love graffiti art, right, because he's really good at it. Yeah. And, and, and so, yeah, so that's, that, so, so that, that's what I, that's what I, I value in others. Um, but, but in myself, it is only the, uh, how I've made other people's lives better, yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, I sleep, usually sleep really well. Um, you know, look, if I have an argument, you know, or, or something like that, you might do. But um, no, uh, I, I, um, uh, I sleep really, really well because I'm not, you know, at the end of the day, all I am is one part of an amazing team and we all do our part, we all do our role and I know that the team is going to win, is, is, is running the business really well so that I can come and do these things, which has got nothing to do with the actual running of the business, right? So, yeah. I don't, no, I, um, really nothing keeps me awake at night. Maybe too much red wine, actually. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So who do you admire and why? Um, look, there are lots and lots of people I admire, right? So you're asking me who's my hero? Yeah. Um, my, if I was to think of one hero it prob in history, it would probably be e Eleanor Roosevelt, um, the wife of, 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 uh, of um, FDR. And the reason was that, I mean, being the wife of a president like him must have been incredibly challenging in its own way. But then when he died, she basically was sing almost single-handedly responsible for the development of the modern UN, modern United Nations. Um, and she was incredible in the way that she cajoled all of these Cold War powers to agree to actually get something like the UN functioning well. Not a lot of people know that. Um, but, um, and, and the job she did was, incredible and also remember she was a woman at that time so you know she used what mana she had as the ex-wife of the president so she's probably my hero in terms of doing something which is utterly incredible uh, in, in a very modest way um, yeah that's she's pr probably probably number one yeah awesome how do you find balance between work and personal commitments um, I, I don't my life is a soup so you know I have technology and and I'm always, if I'm walking, I, I came here last weekend, I'm walking along St Kilda's and I'm talking to someone on the phone. But I'm enjoying myself, you know. So I, I, I can't make that distinction, it all sort of folds into one. Um, I think that, and in fact my personal challenge is switching off when I'm having conversations with people because I've usually got two or three conversations going on in my head at the same time. i switch off and focus on that. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I don't actually think there is this work life balance thing I'm not sure for a lot of professionals is a, the right question to ask. Yeah. It's that are, are you happy and have you, do you have a purposeful life? And that might be work and it might be pleasure, it might be both. And our last question, 
What is one piece of advice that you would like to share with soon-to-be Otago graduates? This is going to sound so woolly. I would say follow your heart. Um, by the time you become a graduate, you have acquired a pretty sophisticated set of skills, uh, of judgement skills. You're going to be able to keep yourself out of trouble, but then you're going to be presented with a range of options, and you're going to have to choose. And when I say follow your heart, if you do something that you know and feel feels right inside, you are likely to do much better at it. You're likely to be much better at, better at it, succeed at it, and feel nourished in the process. Yeah, I know that sounds very woolly, right? You want to hear a practical piece of advice, but whenever you hit a junction in life, and you generally know what the right thing is to do, it's a tough decision, but. Um, follow your heart. What does my heart tell me to do? Now I know there are a lot of parents who say, don't do that. You know, that's a crazy, you'll go off down some crazy wild goose chase. But you have a look at all of the most creative and successful people in their lives. They don't do it because it pays the most. They don't do it because they set up with talent. They do it because they love it. You know, mm -hmm. they love it. And, and if you love it, you'll do, you'll do well at it. Yeah. Cool, so thank you so much for coming along today, Sam. We really appreciate your time and um, have definitely learned a lot and things to take away from this. So all the best and thanks again. Thank you.